Uh, my name is Chen Lin. I, I write a newsletter, what's Chen spying, what's Chen selling, and my website is chenpix.com. So here, I just want to put, you know, what I feel strongly about this uh, 2023, okay? And uh, this year, are we going to be a bull market of gold or silver? Okay, and a little bit company here, a little bit of tolerant. Okay, if you look at this chart, it's from International Energy Agency. Okay, the John Kaiser have similar chart. I just brought, we, we're coming from different perspective. I'm, I'm more interested in silver, okay, uh, in also tolerant, which is, we will talk about that. You want to learn how to spell it. It's going to be a famous medal. <laughs> okay, this is my disclaimer. And um, th this is just for, you know, entertainment only. It's not for stock advice. Okay, that's just further. I'm just telling what's your know, plain language, what I am or what I'm after. Okay, I mostly manage my family assets. Okay, I also publish a newsletter to give people some big ideas of where I see the market's going, and I pick different stocks in different sectors, in both mining, biotech, energy. Okay, I'm not a gold back, not a silver back. Actually, I exited most gold and silver back in 2012. Okay, that's actually 2011 was the top. I didn't get exactly the top, but I got, got out before the crash. I was pounding the table at $12 silver. At eighteen dollars silver because I love silver, <laughs> and uh, I also don't share the point of view of some other people. You know, some other investors they say, "Oh, India demand is going way up, China demand going way up." I, I don't think those are real demand. I mean, it's a reference. Okay, you look at, the, at with a grain of salt because if silver go up ten dollar those Indian buyer will become seller. Chinese buyer will become seller, okay? They will just flip and walk away. So suddenly we have surplus. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't see those are real demand, but it, it's a good reference point. Usually there's a lot of buying from India or China, which means the metal is too cheap. So this is my bold um, prediction. I, not prediction, I'm, bold, I'm very passionate about it. I think gold silver ratio could go back to close to historical 10, okay? Let me tell you um, why. And now I think when silver is getting more expensive, more and more people will treasure silver, okay? They will think, oh, silver is so valuable. And then there could be, we could have central bank accumulating silver again. There used to be central bank used to hold silver as long as gold. I, my, my, you know, just from my point of view, I know this is a lot of people may not agree with me because silver is the prop byproduct of many other mines. So silver has been overproduced in the past decade, and then those silver has been dumped to the market. That actually depressed silver price. Okay, I think that's a key reason silver is so cheap. If you look at the David Morgan presentation, which was wonderful, they tell you silver is so undervalued, but why is so undervalued? That's my perspective. Okay, first let's talk about gold. So the gold, the third quarter, of last year, you see the each quarter, right? This is a Q3. Central bank bought 400 tons of gold. Okay, who bought it? Nobody knows. There is a mystery. I think other news that might also talk about that. There are also people talk about it could be a, a fake data. It could be, you know, uh, someone made it up. But I think it's a more, uh, it's a reflection. Someone secretly bought. 400 tons of gold in Q3. Okay, when the gold was really going down. Uh, it well could be China, but I've been hearing different conflicting um, story. You know China start buying gold in November, in December, right? Each month China buying about 1 million ounce of gold from the open market. So that's about 30 tons, right? So, but it doesn't add up to for 400. So it's one series, uh, someone, or Ch China secretly get this block before they announce it, so they won't get it, you know, they can get a good price. That's one theory. Another is China is just to, you know, this is only 400, it's only a very small portion of China board last year. So there's a rumor, I cannot confirm any way, but the China board actually much, much more, 100 million ounce of gold, right? Why China buy gold? It's very obvious because after watching what happened to Russia, 
uh, what happened to Russia's foreign reserve? Well, China says enough is enough, right? I'm just going to sell U.S. dollars, sell U.S. government bond, and gold is uh, one of the key areas to go. China has about three trillion, almost four trillion of dollar of forex, and uh, they can buy a lot more gold. They can buy <laughs> thousands of thousands of tons of gold. And you can calculate. I mean, of, of course, gold price will go up, and. Also, a very important, even you know, China yelling, when do China sell? China don't sell. China still continues to sell. You can see that every month China is selling the United States government bond. It's just become, you know, something just like United States. They, they wanted somewhere to hurt China. China just is somewhere. I don't, they don't, just don't feel it's safe to put money in the US dollar anymore. It's a completely change of our attitude, okay? So, and the more is coming. So, this is a, another good chart. Okay, it, it's, you know, I put a newsletter a while ago, but that's a pointing to exactly what the investment sentiment. They've been selling gold all the way down. You see that April, that, that's the top, that's, that's a, you know, after the Russian invasion, it over 2000, and they're just selling all the way down. But what happened at the bottom? Right? What happened? They stopped selling. I mean, all the people who want to sell gold already finished selling gold. That's one of the reasons gold is rebounding. I also want to talk about my, one of my favorite metal, which is silver. Okay, so I've been, you know, you, you, as, as someone you may know, I've been pushing uh, Silver Institute to give a more accurate prediction of silver production. I mean, silver is... is deficit or surplus. And uh, recently, there are also a lot of people I noticed, like uh, people used to be, have a daughter like uh, Jeffrey Christian. In his podcast, he already started knowledge the solar panel is the biggest driver uh, for the silver demand. I, I just give you one very simple example. If you can see that, this uh, orange and yellow together is, uh, is solar, okay? This is from International Energy Agency, okay? So here, it was original, and then here, right? This is their original estimate. And then by the end of last year, they already published a new estimate. It's here and here. I mean, I just gave you the, the plain number. So early, uh, last summer, International Energy Agency was, was estimating about 200 gigawatts, a little bit over 200 gigawatts this year for solar panel. And by the end of last year, they were talking about 250. You look at the chart, this is from International Energy Agency, okay? On their website, you can find it, 250. So what I heard from the producer, solar panel producer from China, just this month, is we're going to go to 360, okay? So you think that's, uh, I feel that's a gap. Uh, some other, uh, you know, like uh, for, for example, like Jeffrey Christian and other people, they're honest people, okay? They haven't seen that coming because those have not reflected to the data, but it will be reflected to the data a few months from now. So you're smart on this uh, Saturday and then come here to the session. I'm telling you the demand is much, much higher than the, they, they will have another revision, another revision afterwards for this solar panel demand, okay? And then you can roughly say, uh, roughly, okay, 100 gigawatts equivalent to 70 million ounce of silver, okay, 70 million. You can see that's in just in a few months, the demand already increased by 100 million ounce. That's almost 10% of silver production. So I'm just saying the, the, the revision has been going up and up and up. So this is also from International Energy Agency. They predict the, they have a, this is revised by the end of last year. They already say that the solar will be number one power source by 2027. 20, you see their previous estimate, they all say it's 2020, 2030. Okay, it's already advanced much faster. Why is that? It's, it's just, let me go that. Well, uh, I, well, let's let's go through this. Okay, this is the chart. Actually, I had a, happened to have a dinner with Hackler CEO Phil Baker, and then I show him this chart I got from China, uh, and I put some translation over here. It's from Bloomberg and China's uh, research firm. So we are here. 
we are here with this great transition uh, of solar panel. And this is the most conservative estimate. Okay, I'm telling you, this is the most conservative estimate because there is, I, I'm going to show you, there's estimate from very prestigious PV magazine of the United States predict instead of taking 30 years to reach it, they think it will take only 10 years to reach it. So is this is just like an electrical vehicle. It's just smashing ahead, okay? The solar panel, a lot of people in the United States or maybe Canada, they don't didn't recognize because labor is expensive, you're getting land is expensive, environmental regulation is expensive, but in outside the world, it's the cheapest way of energy, period. Even the mining company in South Africa, they start installing solar panel if you just Pay, pay some attention to, to the news. Okay, so this is an article I told you, PV Magazine. Okay, they already said that this just published recently, a few weeks ago, they think they will go from 300 gigawatts to 3,000. Okay, this is, a, this is an article. Let's go back a page. You see that? It's a conservative Chinese estimate. They think going there in 30 years, and then PV Magazine said, you know, it, it go in 10 years. If you, you can Google this article. I mean, you can see for yourself. If we go to 300 gigawatts, that's potentially we will use about 300% of worldwide solar, I mean, silver production each year. Okay, just put this number in mind. So it's very similar, very similar to electrical vehicle. That curve, we probably around here, and now it's just about to explode because this is so cheap. You don't need to burn natural gas, you don't need to dig coal, you just put it there, it generates electricity. There's an energy storage issue. But this year, if you invest in lithium, you should be a little bit careful because China already very uh, sold in battery to replace lithium batteries coming this year. It will be a big splash. Uh, the sodium battery is twice as much. I mean, uh, twice, twice less expensive than lithium because sodium is so widely available. And uh, its energy density is not as high as lithium, but it's much more stable. So actually that's the thing you, you should thinking about, but, but that's, that's a, another topic. I don't want to talk, it's, it's off my topic. But I'm just saying the sodium battery actually will make the energy storage much, much cheaper, make a solar panel much easier to use because you, you just need the sodium battery because, yeah, so you put the battery there and then you can work day and night and then nighttime use battery. So this is a very important chart and I put it on the front page. So you, those are you need to pay attention. And I, as I said, uh, this, they said 2030, they already advanced it to 2027, just a few months later. Okay, that's, that's for International Energy Agency. They tell you what are the metal needed versus the global production. Okay, so that's why I'm very bullish on silver. You can see almost 40% in a few years. It's not like a decades from now. It's only in a few years will be taken out. That's very conservative estimate by International Energy I can tell you why it's too conservative. It actually will be more. And then even they say it's 2027, I think it's too conservative because the industry, people in the industry telling me it's 2025, which is two years from here. Think about that. And then there's another thing coming. And then they said the tolerance that actually, uh, you know, lighting my, you know, I brought my attention. I think that I, that I really need to investigate, right? So basically right now, 50% uh, of tellurium is used by solar panel, 50% worldwide production. It mostly is by United States, a company called First Solar. You probably heard of that. It's in the S&P 500. If you see that First Solar expansion plan, will run out of tellurium in one or two years. That's almost written in stone. And then according to the International Energy Agency, they will be over 100% in a couple of years. Okay, this is not 2030. As I said, 2030 should be 2027 and probably 2025. So this is the same uh, chart. And then the, that's what they estimate, uh, uh, seven, 700 gigawatts. Remember, this is 700. And then the estimate for this year is 360 now. Okay, they keep advancing. And then they, from all these estimates from my source, who's you know Chinese uh, manufacturer who makes most of the solar panel, this can be reached easily by 2025. 
I'm just and very important. Okay, this is a well. This is original Solar Institute's report, which I had a problem with. Uh, they said the silver will reduce reduction. I, I, I'm waiting for them to put on a, a correction on that. I think they will. Uh, so this is another uh, perception. I I don't know. I have too much. I have enough time. So basically, people, you, if you talk to all these uh, analysts, very very good analysts, they always say, "Oh, solar panel, yes, they use a lot less silver every year." Yeah, it was true in early, but now it's getting less and less, getting flatter because you know the solar panel. Uh, what, the way to use, reduce silver is to make the wire thinner and thinner. Right, uh, that what they also they put the copper in the middle, right? They put a, they use silver to wrap the copper. But if you make it thinner, uh, it's very you have to need the, the certain thickness on top of copper. So actually, that's uh, itself you cannot reduce silver that effectively. Okay, they're trying to every year they try to reduce silver. That's true, but. Since about the change, okay, the new technology, Topcon, this is from American Magazine, okay, Solar Analytica, they add another layer, okay, the key is that you add another layer, you add more silver in that, so the, the silver will increase a lot more per panel. This is the technology is supposed to take off this year, okay, 2023. Last year I was talking about it will take off a year from now, this, is this one, it will take off this year. So this is a, from Chinese source. Actually, it's much more conservative, much closer to reality because they already put a lot of factor how to reduce silver usage. It's not as aggressive as uh, American magazine, but you can see from the top count, it, it does increase 25 to 50 percent silver. Okay, the most exciting is the next technology called HJT that will more than double the silver usage. Uh, let me show you. The, what there are also possibility of HBC next generation. It's a similar irritation. Okay, the little top con HJT. I don't have too much time, so I'm just telling you double sided. This is very important. Okay, you see, this is American technology. This is by a California startup called Swift, Swift Solar. You can go to their website, Swift Solar. Okay, so. What they do is um, they use multiple layer of HJT, multiple layer, one for the ultraviolet, one for visible, one for infrared, and one maybe invisible, they add a new layer. Why? Because this, you can increase efficiency, maybe from 26% to theoretically all the way to 70%. Uh, you have a Toyota already came out, this car, right? So <laughs> people are laughing at that because it's, you know, it's a solar roof, right? So it's, the idea is you, when you're driving, you don't need to charge that much. Those cars will love to have this. Even they use more than 10 times more so silver than current so solar panel, right? Because it's more efficient. The same thing in the future, my, my watch, uh, smart, smart watch, all these, I won't have a solar panel on that. That will be usage for those high efficient solar panel. That's the future. And then they use more than 10 times silver than the current solar panel. So that's what I see, and I don't have too much time. I just put this bottom line there. Okay, just prepare for the Silver Squeeze 2.0. I was talking to our silver friend. I think uh, uh, timing could be in May because May is a silver institute. They will come out with a new report. If they put all the data in, people can see very clearly the gap of supply demand is widening every year and it's going to be much worse this year, actually much worse. So for investor, that's a, that's a conclusion on the draw. I don't have too much time, so I'm trying to go through that. This is a 50-year chart of silver. Okay, it's from my friend, Crescat. Um, so you can see this is a, it's a beautiful copper handle right here. <laughs> so see this, this chart. Okay, I, and I personally think when they blow, it will blow over $50 an ounce. So just a little bit about China, because so many people ask me about China. The COVID lockdown is almost finished, and the people back to normal. Okay, I got all the pictures. Uh, Beijing is like traffic jam and crowded with people, 90%, I think, almost. So, uh, the, but the housing market is collapsing. Okay, there are a lot of people not happy. So because of all these uh, COVID, all the lockdown, you know, et cetera. And then there could there is a... A uh, major stimulus will happen this year. Okay, this is additional information. Uh, Chen Pix and partner with uh, my good friend Jay Taylor. And then just uh, put a few things together on, for you. Okay, so this is a chart. And uh, this chart 
So even the market looks so bad. You see that this is on the history versus history looks like a bottom, right? So much cash on the sidelines. It's unbelievable cash on the sideline. And then this is a this is a chart from my friend uh, in Canaco. Okay, we are here for venture. That's for Canadian venture market. We're there. So it's time to start looking for good investment. 